after a nice week on the black sapphire, sapphire black, 1M from last week's white eater booking. This week, Terry and I, we tackle a late 90s Italian fourth generation Maserati Quattro Porte. The 1M to begin with was actually a very nice car, a very nice example, before we even laid fingers on it. This, however. Was the, yeah. the Maserati, however, there is a lot of room for improvement. It's seen better days, it's had some recent mechanical work, it's had um, a lot of deeper marks here and there, nicks, chips, swirls and scratches. Welcome to What Details. Transport based near Silverstone. I'm sure, the owner's gonna be pretty happy with that one. <laughs> a lengthy wash procedure for the Maserati. She's indoors now on the ramp, clay bar, pulling a lot off actually. Surface contamination which needs to be stripped. Wheels have been off for the arches to be flushed, uh, but they'll be back off again when the bodywork is being blown down. The wheels will be outside to be cleansed properly. And it's the first sort of insight into the paint condition when it's clean now. I knew it was pretty bad before, but in for a treat on this one. Yeah, before blow dry, the grills, the vents are coming out. But look what we discover. Yeah. Better remove this before we start blowing. I'm sure it's a worthwhile job, but it's proven the bloody pain. Access and space underneath here to get. Luckily, they're just on two prongs, but imagine trying to finger or machine polish around, especially the top one, the badges, and you look at the damage there. Worthwhile. Yeah, but all right, Tab. Uh, half an hour later, but well worth the effort. It's gonna be fiddly getting them back on. It's gonna allow the area to clean up very much so. So that afterwards is gonna be. Uh, 
Right, skip to the number on the screen now if you don't want to watch the the paint inspection already. We've got a good idea of what we're up against. Poor old car, poor old Jim and Terry. This is gonna be a hard week. I can feel it. Come on, scan grip. I see you on some of the uh, SEMA posts, SEMA Motor Show. Scan grip have got some new gear coming out. Look forward to catching up with them. Where do we start? Bonnet, I suppose. Don't even need the handheld light to see the haze here. Although with a white detail, we're trying to chase paint perfection in some instances, in some cases, in some, some cars. That isn't possible. We do the best what we've been given. Can't imagine there's a great deal. I think the bonnet's been painted. I haven't yet measured any thickness. I'd imagine it's had a fair bit of paint. Oh, nasty. Oh. 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 Oh, mate. Oh, mate. Mate. Oh, mate. Near side front wing. Let's work backwards. We've got a nice big tight cluster of unfinished sander marks. Let's see if we can see them in the normal light. There. Uh, cables, lances, hoses, something's been chafed over the side there. Deep scratches. This seems to be on this near side, this horizontal, lots of these horizontal scratches that run all the way through. Hedgerow or similar. Big impacts there on the mirror. Like the tailgate badges, we're gonna investigate the side wing badges here, because again, trying to, trying to polish all this out. It's, it's impossible, so explore the options in here to sort of get behind that. We're hoping, similar to the rear, it's on pins as opposed to adhesive. Whoa, blood biddy, bam and am. Whoa, blood biddy, bam and am, blood biddy biddy ba, bam and am, ba ba da ba da, bam and am. Scars, chips, abrasions, burn through. So the work it's had done is mostly mechanical work and uh, the owner claims that these are new. These weren't there before. Chip here, chip inside the door edge there. Paint touch up must be sourced for this, I mustn't forget that. By the way, lots of people email me asking about the paint touch ups. It's covered in a few videos in the past. There's scratches in the handle there. Oh man. Uh, lots of people get in contact about the paint touch up. Who is it? Supplies for me. It's Fisher Motor Factors of Lincoln. Details are on screen now if you tap it into Google. Whoa, Black Biddy, Birmingham. I don't think that's going to come out. All them. What's going on here? So the paintwork now has been wiped down of IPA, so this is the true finish you're looking at. All the dry in smears or whatever have disappeared. Rear bumper, more sanding mark clusters here. On the very edge, here. Lack of overspray, haze, here. More chafes on the corner. Here, swirly light clusters. Here. Whoa, flat biddy, bam and am. Oh. Uh, is that open? Yes. On the lip, going into the boot. Again, do what we can to this there. It's pretty marked up. Oof. Trouble with this lot, there's two sharp edges here. Gonna put a lot of pressure on them to weak spots. Flatten marks, good cluster of flatten marks. Throwing in the mix, we can see buffer trails, the horizontal spikes that dance left, dance right. Deep scratch, deep scratch. Filler cap's been painted. A lot of mess around this. Oh dear, all right. This offside wing has been painted, but look. It's been painted with the badge in place. They've masked around the badge. That's cowboy. 
Okay, so that might prevent us wanting to actually take these off. Um, good, good, good. Okay. No, oh, Terry. And back to where we started, really. Some fiddly jobs on the door pillars. Most cars nowadays don't have these. The painted surround going over the top and down the side of the door. Looks like the door's been painted as well. Some thin spots, some speckles here and here. And what this is on the paint. It runs up, not sure. On the roof, are the bid lights off. All we can see really is the usual damage. So, again, it's a case of knock out the swirls, the haze, the light stuff, and then, then we're left localizing the heavy defects and chasing paint perfection uh, as safe as we can with what we've got. So, Mr. Maserati, give us five days and you'll be a different car. Ooh, bootlid, bootlid, bootlid. To get to the badges there, to take them off, we had to just remove the panelling. And the access is very limited under there, which is why it's taking a bit of time. Yeah, that's gonna be buzzed over and clean, very easy. But then there, again, deep scratches riddled over the whole panel. Speak to Terry. Terry, a little better. Yeah. Would you like the good news or the bad news? Uh, I'll have the good news first. Um, you won the lottery. There isn't any good news to be honest. Oh, okay. No, no, it's all bad news. No. Actually, the good news is these look a lot better. There's some wheel weight glue there at the end. Look at that tar. Oh, yeah. That's what you call a tar deposit. Mm. The paint is awesome. Just, just raise your eyebrow for me. <laughs> was that a confused face or a sexy face? Yeah. I didn't know which one to raise. <laughs> you be careful with what you're raising. Taping itself is a bit of a skill um, to make your life, keep your life easy. I've gone too close to the rubber there and actually when this is polished, I can pretty much guarantee that that tape is gonna be flicked and it's gonna be lifted up. So I'm just gonna drop a millimeter over the top of that onto the actual paint to prevent that from happening. And then fold away the edges because they too get caught and get lifted. So this way, we're not gonna have any contamination from the tape with the glue. That's it. Similarly there, I'd always start it off the panel rather than have it left close to the top, which means it's more likely to be caught with the polisher and then lift, and again, glue contamination from the tape on the pad or the microfiber, it's a pain in the ass.
after a quick uh, test cut up on the roof line, albeit pretty cut up, um, it's soft paint, seemingly, so it's pretty marked. But we've got rid of, actually, a good amount of the defects because it is soft. It just means that it hasn't finished down too well with the cutting from the microfiber pad. But with this refined, it'll really put a bit of life back into it. And it's at that point as to how far we take things after that one clearing pass. We then spot the deep stuff, which is otherwise hidden in the haze that then needs chasing further, which takes the time. So this half the roof has been cut, nothing fancy yet, no localizations, just a quick hit twice in it's been split into thirds. One third, two third, the final. But this has now been refined just as a very test, a very quick test again. Uh, and this is it's nice. It's what we want to see. It's a bit of encouragement for the long week ahead. But, uh, and we'll get cracking now that the wheels are finished on the bonnet. Fast approaching the end of day one. Pleasantly surprised, to be honest. So the roof has all been cut. The edges have been tickled. The the three inch, albeit fine on the front edge. On the side, it ever so slightly drops. So the three doesn't quite get into that very tight edge. So the hybrid has been out for that. Two inches of one there to get close to the rubber. It was the section on the far side here that's been refined. And then as the cutting continues, the haze. So to clear the damage, you, to a degree, have to make some damage yourself. This is all easily uh, rectifiable now with the refining. Some buzz work been done here. Chasing some localized stretches that didn't come out after the first two cuts. And then the bonnet. There's some good work happening on the bonnet. This obviously your before condition. If we go up, after. So we have before, after and during. The, you can see the tide mark where it comes in. Similar to my section on the roof, this channel has just been refined as a test to double check that we just just on the right path. Uh, the markings here will be Terry. Yeah, I can see where he's aiming for. Highlighting a couple of remaining stretches so that the line, the smudge, is just picking out remaining damage that needs identifying for tomorrow. <laughs> There's a couple more here as well, Terry. So although the paint finish on a hole is pretty soft, it's actually easy to cut. It's that soft that it's leveling the paint pretty fast. Which actually is something to be careful of.
that is the remains of a scratch that was gone through, which I've had the paper out on, it's too deep. And the mark here is me highlighting the remains of just one more there that I want to try and chase. These long stretches here are causing problems on the rear panel. They continued all the way down. Took some real bad chasing. And it's half past 10, and this is the only panel I've been on this morning. Not yet finished either. Please. Life really hurts without you. Just starting on the offside door handles, and I forgot to point out on the walk around. There's a weird little outline of this one, actually. It's bizarre. Um, but on the rear, on the rear, certainly, there is missing paint. You can see on the very edge, it's burnt through previously. So, this is obviously a panel that hasn't yet been touched by us. So with this, to be honest, nah, lots of taping required and work around options. What the hell have I done with the line? It's here. Oh, you nicked it. I nicked no. it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll keep you busy. Often talk about the clearing pass, how all this can be tackled pretty easily to clear that to a decent result. Uh, this has been done up top on the leading edge here, but look at the scratch to the back. Ready? Here she is. It's these ones that a lot of people probably wouldn't take the time to chase, but they say this is a white detail. There's plenty of room for improvements on this in terms of the thickness, the lacquer, so it's going to take some time to chase it out now. A bit of sanding going on there as well. The worst areas. Obviously not yet refined, but a nice 50-50 on the wing on the near side. Terrors work battling some deep hedgerow stretches down here. Similar to the offside, the badge when it's been painted the wing, the badge has remained in place for the sake of four bolts. One, two, three, four, to take the light and the badge off. Wouldn't you think they would? The daunting thing now <laughs> is we've got all of this and unlike most cars this has the painted door frame as well which just adds the complications the rubber to watch for and it's not as though it's a normal bootlid either we've got all this that's not even the bumper there's the bumper lots of paint
messiest little nut and washer. I didn't sign up for this. Gloves would have been small to be honest. All right for you, Terry. Your right, access is a piece of cake to get to this side. Tell you what, you can put them back on. I think that's ready for the wash now. It is Wednesday, it is 10 to 10. No, 10 minutes to half past 10. 20 past 10. Offside of the vehicle now complete, it's with the exception of the sill. There's some bad scratches on that. Mirror, door frames, front wing, Bosch. On the back now, a lot of mess to deal with here. The usual people closing the boot with fingers and rings and keys and whatever else. I've just done a bit of cut and I've done a bit of refining as a test to see how we go. So the badges are removed. She's stunning. It's taken maybe three or four cuts in the localized stuff. If I just go and get the badge, it's pretty tough to get in and out, so I won't push it all the way in. But you're gonna get an idea of how a worthwhile effort that actually was to, once this is polished up, this is tarnished and a little messy itself. Job for one of us later. So remaining panels, the light clusters in this lower valance, the remaining part of this boot lid. Top surface is the boot lid. Near side rear wing, near side rear door, bumpers, side strip. I don't know where to start on the back here. It's going to be a mammoth episode again. It's likely to be pushing 60 minutes, so I'm now splitting the edit into two parts. This is part one, the wash, the decontamination, the introduction to the paint condition, the severity of the defects you've seen, and the start of the paint correction. Part two is shortly going to follow. After this video, you'll find a link to the video down in the description below, which is going to be finalizing the paint correction paint refinements, paint protection, the accessories, the wheels, the trims, the grills, the badges off the car, and then the final after footage. Stay tuned, thanks for watching. See you in part two.